writer's life begins long before the first words are set down on the tablet. It begins with a sense of anticipation, a sense that one's own life is a story that must somehow find a way to be told. Oh! 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 What is it? I don't know, Laura. When it came time to tell my story, I learned that if I went back in memory as far as I could and left my mind there for a while, it could go back farther and still farther. Some kind of lightning. It's all right! And to my surprise, I discovered that I have lived an interesting life. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> we'll have to plow a fire line. Laura, get back to the house and warn your mother. Go into the house and grab as many burn-off sacks as you can. Mary, hold on tight to your sister. Don't let her out of your arms. All right, Laura, we're going to need lots of water. Oh, thank the Lord. It's going to be heading out towards those claims on the big slough. Those folks out that way will need some help. How about a half pint? Want to help me fight another fire or two? I'll saddle the horses. All right. You did your share of work today. It was fun. <laughs> yes, it was. I'm damned if I know why, but it was. <laughs> well, it looks like the Lord left us a blade or two of grass here and there. Who shanty is that? Some newcomer. Let's introduce ourselves. Hello! I expect they're all fighting fires. Probably won't mind if they water the horses. better than to go poking around a man's belongings. 
Sorry. Good sturdy work. Somebody knows his business. It's got to be a metal arc. You really can't tell the difference, can you? What else could it be? Well, it's a Nighthawk, of course. Do you see it yet? Yes. What is it? A Nighthawk. And what is he doing? Swooping back and forth. You can barely see him now. What am I going to do when I go away? Without you there to describe the world for me. But aren't you excited? You get to go somewhere and you get to see things. I doubt whether anyone sees much at a college for the blind, Laura. Anyway, you're the one that should be going to college. You're the one that can make a mark. I felt so useless today. Hush! You did your part. Have you ever heard of anybody named Amanzo? Amanzo. No. What a funny name. I don't think it's funny. It's unusual. Well, is it a man's name or a woman's name? I don't know. The sun's almost down. It's sinking into the clouds now. Come on. You better help Ma with dinner. I was one and twenty, girl, and you were seventeen. Da -da -dum, da -da 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 -da. I've got that store building almost finished out in town, and I thought it might be best if we moved into it come winter. Move to the Smith? Why? <laughs> so we don't freeze into icicles, Flutter Budget. This little shanty's no match for a Dakota winter. I don't like living in town. Living with settled people in a settled place will do you no harm. Well, come spring, we'll move back out here and build us a solid house. Unless, of course, we uh, get to feeling feisty and decide we want to keep heading west. Charles, you promised. <laughs> yes, I did. I made a promise, and a promise I'll keep. I just had no idea that this territory was going to get so crowded so fast. There will be no more wandering from pillar to post. We will have a real home at last. Yes, we will. And what's a house without music? What do I play, girls? They're all they doing it. Oh, <laughs> well, I can't please all of you. So I guess I'll just please my bride. I think I know your favorite. Because it was the only way I knew of grasping hold again of the people that I loved. I became a writer, I think, because I needed to make time stand still. I said, read it. Miss Walter, please. I... Oh, are you embarrassed? Maybe someone else would care to read it for you. All right, Patsy. Why don't you? Go? I'll read it. Going to school is lots of fun. By laughter, we have gained a ton. For we laugh until we have a pain. At lazy, lousy. Liza Jane.
Do you suppose it to be a good poem, Laura? Well, it... Do you suppose it to be a kind poem? I didn't mean for it. Let me tell you something, Laura Ingalls, so that the whole class may hear it. I live alone on a homestead claim, growing my own crops, holding on winter after winter, after many a man has backtrailed to the east. I am not lazy. And as I am careful to keep my house free of vermin, unlike the houses of some of the pupils in this room, I am not lousy either. Your poem is malicious, Laura. And furthermore, it is bad. You can't just declare a poem to be bad. You have to offer evidence. And the truth is, she could find none. She was just angry. What does she know about poetry in the first place? I was so disappointed I didn't have a chance to read your poem aloud, Laura. Well, don't be Patsy. I'm sure you'll find another opportunity to show off for Miss Walter. Maybe not. I may not be here long. My father's got a new job with the railroad. I'll be living in Chicago. Oh, and Laura, you'll still be stuck here in this buffalo wallow. You stung her good with that poem, Laura. Cap Garland likes you. Cap is far too frivolous to be taken seriously. But he does have good text and poetry. That's not how it happened, Pa. She wasn't meant to see it. She says you've been nothing but trouble from the start. That's not true. You and Cap Garland. She's a tyrant, Pa. She's mean-spirited and vindictive. She's got a hard lot, Laura. And you made it harder. Now, you've been given a gift. You can turn what you see and what you feel into words. And you used your gift against that woman. I don't care if she's a tyrant or not. She don't deserve that. Can you bring me another board? They ain't even stopping. Whoa. Whoa. Morning, water. Morning to you, Shingles. You ready? Yep. Where do you want to put it? Well, I'll just uh, set it down right over here. I hope you're not planning to pass the winter out here, Mr. Ingalls. Oh, no. Of course, if, uh, if I was living in a bachelor's paradise like you and your brother, I might give it a go. I'll tell you, this little shanty gets snowed in. It's going to be a mighty tight squeeze of me and five females. Come on, Flutter Budget. Get over here and give us a hand. Thank you. You're welcome. If you got any more lumber you don't need, just let me know. She'll use it to fix that place up in town. We may have a board of two after we finish the stables. Well, I appreciate that. I owe you. Don't know if you do it. All righty then. There you go. Good day to you, Mr. Ingalls. Yes, sir. And, uh, good day to you too, Miss Flutter Budget. <laughs> well, I guess I didn't make a proper introduction. This is my daughter, Laura. This is Mr. Wilder. Yeah. Pleased to meet you, Laura. Mr. Wilder. Please call me on Lonzo. Lonzo. I've never seen them in such a hurry that they didn't even stop to rest. What? I think we got a hard winter coming our way.
this is what I told myself I must remember. The feel of things. The scratch of wool on your skin. The sharp smell of a wood fire. The long, stagnant afternoons when it seems that nothing interesting can ever happen. All right. Jerry Ingalls. Since you seem more interested in making that noise than in doing anything worthwhile, you may. And then the shocking moment when something happens after all. Listen. Listen to what? Shh. What is it? <laughs> It's a blizzard. All right, children, listen to me. This storm could last for days. We do not have enough coal to last that long, so we'll have to leave now. We'll head for Clayton's store. That's the nearest building. I want you to take each other's hands and do not let go. If you take even one step in the wrong direction in a blizzard like this, you might lose your way and freeze in minutes. Do you understand me perfectly? Everyone get your coats and wraps. I want you to place yourself in the middle of the line. Laura, Laura, you bring up the rear. Blizzards came with smothering force, one after another. The voice of the storms was a terrible sound, but the perfect stillness they left in their passing was more frightening than any silence I have ever known. The Robins children are missing. They were away from home when the last storm hit. You can help us look for them. Oh, darling. Mary, take care of Carrie and Grace. Make them breakfast. Laura, hurry. Get dressed as fast as you can.
Lord. 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 sack of wheat just sold for $50. What about the train? The snow is too deep. They can't get food to us till spring. No wood or coal either. You want to make those hay knots as tight as you can. They'll burn slower that way. Are we going to die? It's only 20 miles. Man could get there and back in a day. Not hauling a sled full of wheat, not through the snow. And if another blizzard hits while he's out there, he's not coming back at all. All I'm saying is that there's a farmer with enough wheat for this whole town. He's only 20 miles out, and we got to break in the weather. Now, I don't see as how we got any choice in the matter, unless we're content to starve. So why don't you just let me have the loan of your sled, and I'll go get oh, it. Oh, now, excuse me, Mr. Ingalls, but you got no business going out on an errand like that. I know the country, Wilder. Well, I know the country too, sir. But if I don't come back, I'm not going to be leaving a wife and children behind the star. Now, I'll go get the wheat. I'll go with my brother. No, Royal, you stay here unless somebody's got to look after our claim. Well, you're not going by yourself. I'll go with him. I'm tired of being cooped up indoors. All right then, Cap. We'll go together. You know that big cottonwood standing alone about uh, eight miles out? That's, that's probably the only landmark that's not snowed over. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I'll keep an eye out for it. Well, all right, then. Ready, Cap? Yep. Historians have written about that hard winter of 1881. It was the worst anybody remembered. 
I wrote about it too, though not so much as a recorder of history, as an observer of people. And the people I knew on the prairie in those years would have given you a puzzled look had you called them heroes. They ventured into the unknown land because that was where their hearts took them. to be able to see the stars for once. They should have been back by now. Well, I expect they'll be along any time. What if... What if they don't come back, Paul? Well, then I'll take a crack at it, I guess. Thunder, Laura, this is the hardest country I've ever seen. You think we ought to go back to Minnesota? <laughs> oh, no. No, no, back trailing for me. I want to keep moving west till I can feel that Pacific breeze blowing in my face. You want to come along? <laughs> yes, if I do. No, I was afraid of that. You got the wandering strain. It looks like another blizzard. What's gonna happen to them out there? I don't know, Laura. But we better get inside. I think, have an unmistakable moment to mark the end of childhood. There is just a change, subtle and bewildering. A time when we are suddenly strangers to ourselves. Until one day, we discover the person we have become. With the end of the War of 1812 and the signing of the Treaty of Ghent, the young nation entered into a period of stability and prosperity known as the Era of Good Feeling. Self-confident and expansive, the United States faced ever westward toward the fertile river valleys, the trackless prairies, and the mountain fastnesses first glimpsed by those intrepid travelers Lewis and Clark. And the common man found expression in the formidable person of Andrew Jackson, known to one and all as Old Hickory. 
We are very proud of you. You did well, Half Pint. I never would have believed that one girl could carry so much information around in her head. <laughs> Good evening. Hey, Walter. Well, Laura, you have an exceptional mind. I always knew that. See what you can accomplish when you set your mind to learning. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Walter. Bravo to you, Miss Ingalls. You did our history up. Par excellence. Long is Mr. Bucci. Hello. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Bucci live in a settlement about 30 miles out. Yes, I come all the way here tonight to see you, young lady. And I'm delighted to say that my trip was not wasted. I have made the right decision. Decision? We had meant to discuss this with you later, Laura, but now that Mr. Bucci's here... I want you to teach her a school. What? It's not much of a school, mind you. Uh, it's an abandoned shanty, but we've fixed it up as best we can, and now there are half a dozen boys and girls at the settlement eager to have the portals of learning open for them. <laughs> I'm still a student myself. I, I don't even have a teaching certificate. Oh, teaching certificate is the merest formality. I've already spoken to the county superintendent about it. The job pays $20 a month. Plus board. You'll be living with Mrs. Bucci and myself. Would you excuse us, please, Mr. Bucci? Yes. Yes. I don't like that man. Yes, well, uh, he is a bit of a blowhard. But $20 is a good wage. No amount of money could convince me to move into that man's house. Laura? We need that money. With Mary off at college and those bills to pay, I'm having quite a time of it. And we need you to help out. And it's just for the two terms. You'll have some time off at Christmas. You come home then for a spell. Fine, Pa. I'll do whatever you say. Drop me is not something a person should do, but but that's what I was doing in there. I feel like I'm being sold into slavery. I love my sister and I'm sorry she's blind. Does that mean I must never be happy? But these places isn't that far away. Thirty miles in snow in winter. Might as well be across the ocean. I wish that you weren't going. You do? Good night, Laura. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, no! Here we are at last. Laura, this is Mrs. Bucci. How do you do, Mrs. Bucci? You can put your things in here. This will be your room, such as it is. It's got a lamp and a basin. But we can't afford no food for us, such as you might be used to in Desmet. I'm quite accustomed to simplicity, Mrs. Bucci. Who's this? This is little Mikey. <laughs> and he's been a perfectly selfish little demon today, too. May I help you at dinner, Mrs. Bucci? No, I'm perfectly capable of doing things on my own. Lord knows that's how it's always been around here. Good morning. I'm Miss Ingalls. Will you please take your seats? Uh, 
school will come to order? It's not nine o'clock yet. What is your name? I don't have to tell you my name till nine o'clock. That's when school starts. Clarence. May I help you with the dishes, Mrs. Bushy? May I hold little Mike while you finish dinner? What a prissy little hey, thing. Why are you hearing What do I care if she hears me? I guess people in her family are too refined to say what they mean. But I'm not too refined. Ida, I was brought up to speak plain, and by golly, that's what I'll do. Shh! Don't hush me. Lottery budget? What's the matter? I'm scared of the wolf. You are? Boy, you've got nothing to be afraid of. Come on. Come on, I'll show you. Come up here. Let's go look at him. See out there? They're right there. They're just singing. Don't you worry, Laura. No wolf is ever going to hurt you. Because we're safe. Right here in our little house. Come on. Pray for you. I'm sorry I won't be able to take you home for Christmas this weekend, Laura. What? Well, the weather, my dear. No one would dare go out on that. But don't you worry. We'll have a fine old Christmas right here. Mm. Excuse me. Miss Hoity Toity. It's freezing out there, and it's only going to get worse. I'm ready. This is crazy. This is suicide. I'll be back for the start of the term. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Bucci. Goodbye, little Mikey. Get out there, Paul! <laughs> 
42 below before the mercury froze. That's pretty cool, all right. That wasn't the brainiest thing you've ever done, Wilder. Setting out with my daughter in a storm like that. It wasn't his fault, Pa. I insisted. Well, I don't care who insisted. Shows bad judgment, driving 30 miles in the teeth of a blizzard. So, tell me, how's that cutter of yours working the snow? It's pretty sprightly, I guess. Well, I suppose I'd better be getting on back to the claim. You can't go now. You've just barely begun to thaw out. Well, I don't want Royal thinking I'm lost out there somewhere. Mrs. Ingalls, he might try to go look for me. Thank you. Maybe I can offer you another ride sometime. You mustn't go to any trouble. Oh, there's no trouble at all. The horses need the exercise. Good night, Laura. Shingles. Shingles, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I believe he means business. What do you mean, business? <laughs> Good to have you home, half five. books to tell the story of a childhood, but now I find myself impatient to address the broader span of life. There is a glory in becoming an adult and stepping out of the confines of your own childish fears and feeling your soul as buoyant as the air around you. Oh, it is glorious to be free. I shall never allow myself to be put in such a box again. From now on, my life is mine to conduct as I please. Yeah, yeah, Barna. Yeah. <laughs> Those horses look like they want to run. No, it wouldn't be safe. I don't care. I almost killed you before taking you out of that storm. Are you afraid, Mr. Wilder? You should get a sulky plow, Pa. It'd save you a lot of work. I can't afford a sulky plow, half pint. Uh, maybe next year. If I can get a good crop in. Where are you going now? I got to finish that cabinet for cleaning. Don't you want your supper? I'll tell your mom to put a plate back for me. I'll get to it. Pa? What is it, Laura? Nothing. Here comes Wilder. I've got to get ready. <laughs> Give me back the rain, boy. No! Give me back, boy. I have to throw you off. Give me back. Give me back. Oh, B.T. Bar. Oh, easy, boy. <laughs> yes. Let's stop here a moment. <laughs> Whose house was this? It's a surveyor for the railroad. 
lived here with his wife till she got scarlet fever and died. The way I heard the story was he went out of his mind and burned the house down. What happened to him? They say that he went west, across the ocean, and fell in love with a Hawaiian princess. I suppose that's just talk. It's about a mile over this swell. It's our place. Well, and I've proven up on the homestead, and I got another claim I hope to build a little house on someday. I've been to your place. When? After that fire. Paul and I were riding back, and we stopped to introduce ourselves. You weren't there, but I walked right in anyway. And there was your coat hanging on a peg with a letter in the pocket and your name on it. That was brazen of you. Where did you get that name? It's an old family name. My parents call me Monzo. Boyle calls me Manny sometimes. Monzo's a mouthful, I guess. I think those are both very poor nicknames. Oh, well, you do? Yes, indeed. Well, what would you suggest, then? I don't know. Manly. Manly. <laughs> Manly. Hmm. Well, now that you have rechristened me, I think that I've got the same right. You don't like Laura? Oh, I like it all right, but I want to call you by a different name. One that nobody else has a claim to. What's your middle name? Elizabeth. 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 Well, Bessie it is then. Bessie! <laughs> Bessie! <laughs> what is it that you want to do? In your life, what do you want to do? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm on the farm. Is that it? Great deal, of yes. What about you? I want to go places and see things and feel things and somehow hold on to them, keep them all from being forgotten. What it was like to hear my pa play the fiddle when I was a little girl. What it was like when my sister went blind. What it's like standing here with you, with these wild flowers growing at our feet. Yeah. I suppose I'll remember that last one for quite some time. Well, come on. It's going to take us a while to get back. I don't plan on letting you run those horses like you did on the way out here. Come on. Would you care for an engagement ring? That would depend on who offered it to me. Would you take it from me? Yes. Yes, I would. But I will not say obey. Pardon? In the service, where the bride pledges to love, honor, and obey, I will love and honor manly. But I plan to live my life pretty much as it occurs to me to do so. And I won't promise to obey you or anyone else. Well, it's just a word, Bessie. Words have meaning. I take them seriously. Well, all right then, Bessie. You have yourself a bargain. Aren't you going to kiss me? I didn't know that you would want me to. 
prefer to be married, you're gonna have to take some things on faith. effect until we have the collar and trim on. Is that her wedding dress? No, Carrie, this is a traveling dress for afterwards. Bye, bye. What do you think, Pa? Uh -oh. How's it look so far? Well, so far, I'd say it's a marvel. But uh, I think Almanzo's gonna get that house built before you girls get those dresses made. <laughs> Making a dress is no less an accomplishment than building a house, Chuck. Well, I expect you're right, Caroline. Yeah, Grace, I think you're gonna have to keep your eyes open. Cause I heard that that mad dog was on the loose again. You know I'm not a mad dog, too, Frankie. <laughs> oh, Carolina, I got a letter from Claude to ask you. You remember Claude? Well, he's out in Oregon now, and he wants me to go out there and take a look around. He says he's never seen a country with more opportunity for a man. He's got a got a temperate climate. <laughs> Not like here. Must be those ocean breezes, I expect. And uh, it's not all it's not all filled up like Dakota. <laughs> I swear, we got so many neighbors around here, you could spend all day just saying, how do you do? Charles, don't. Well, it'd, be, it'd just be for a quick trip, you know, take a look around and, uh, well, it looked good. Then we decided we wanted to make a new beginning. I'll have no more new beginnings, Charles. This is our home. This is where we're going to stay. I'm not prospering here, Carolina. Have we prospered anywhere else? We don't prosper because we don't stay, Charles. Because you have no patience. Because you're always rushing off to some new beginning. The Oregon is... I'm not moving to Oregon. Do you understand me, Charles? I'm not. You can go if you like. I'm staying here where your children live. Where your daughter's about to be married. My God, Caroline! What do you think I am? Some horse you can hobble to keep from wandering? You may wander where you will. I'm through following you places just because you have a mind to go there. You can have Oregon or you can have your family! No, you... Don't interrupt your mother, Laura. Besides, she's right. No sense in letting a few hard winners run us off this place. The people who do best are the people who stay put. Not the ones who go chasing after dreams. Charles. I didn't mean to be so harsh. Well, the truth is harsh. Want me to get your fiddle, Pa? Yes, please. Let's have some music. No, no, I'm, I'm not in a, in a musical mood tonight. Besides, I gotta go tend old Bob's foot. That crack in his hoof is getting a lot worse. parlor. And this, this back here, this will be the pantry. All of it? Why, it's huge. I'm a big eater. And this is our bedroom. And I thought we could put the bed coming out this way. It may be a little warm at first in the summertime, but we can plant some cottonwoods, and after a while, I, I think we'll have some fine shade. And again, this is uh, the parlor. Oh, we each have a chair there by that window. I guess that's where we'll be spending most of our evenings. Probably be where we'll grow old together.
There's something wrong? No, no. But of course, you're the queen of the house, so you decide wherever the furniture goes. We're going to be spending all of our lives here, aren't we? That's what you're saying. Well, I hadn't thought that we wouldn't, Bessie. What's wrong? I don't know. I just didn't realize it would be so small. Well, Bessie, we can add rooms once children's... No, not the house. My life. Could we see the Pacific? What? If we took a notion that we wanted to see the Pacific, could we just get on a train and go? We can't just leave the farm like that once it started, Bessie. Not on a notion, you know that. Yes, I know that. Look. I don't know what exactly it is that you're looking for. But I'm asking you to trust that you can find it here. That you can find it with me. I want to think about this again, Almanzo. Please. Just give me a chance to think about it again. I may go to New York with Royal then to see our folks. I'll probably be gone till April or so. Oh, winter? There's no reason for us to rush into it. And I can see we've already done that once, so. Come on. I'll take you home. I'm sure there'll be a letter on the next train. Why should there be? Why should he write me at all? In his place, I wouldn't. He'll return in the spring, and we'll be cordial to one another, and that will be that. I don't want to lose him off. No, of course you don't. But I don't want to lose me either. Listen to me now. You are your father's child. I've always known that. Both of you itchy as can be. Both of you full of dreams. And it makes no more sense to try to talk you out of those dreams than to talk a bird out of a song. But if you find someone you love, someone you trust, You've got to make room, Laura. You've got to make room in your life for that.
as far as Illinois. That's really something. That's. I'll put my tobacco in there. Thank you, honey. And Ma, this is for you. Oh, Mayor. Well, I hope it's not too large. Pa sent me the dimensions. I'll no, get her. no, it's perfect. How did you learn to do such beautiful work? Oh, we were never idle. I think the administrators were scared to death of the thought of a bunch of blind women sitting around with nothing to do. <laughs> Oh, I think she's got some angles in her flutter budget. Laura, may I hold her? Of course you can. Can I go see her and Mary? Huh? Okay. Hey, got her head? Okay. There you go. Hello, little Rose. 
Well, I'll tell you, Wilder, it's a satisfaction to have all my girls back again. All my girls plus one. Mm. <laughs> Hello there, Mrs. Wilder. There ain't so little milky yet. We'll give it a few more days. And we'll harvest. We did it, Bessie. You brought us a picnic. You did. It's a good crop. Close your eyes. Why? So I want you to guess. Fried apples and onions. <laughs> They won't be as good as your mother's, of course. Mmm. Do you like it? Well, that depends. Did you make any breakfast pudding for dessert? <laughs> I never said I loved you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a thunderstorm's coming. We better see to the baby. see the banker again. It ain't cold for the winter. Seed grain. I got the notes due on the plow and binder and the horses. The horses are mortgaged. I bet everything on this crop, Bessie. The stories I have told in my books are all true. But I'm not convinced that in the end they add up to the whole truth. There were stories I left out. There were dark days I did not want to revisit. What? Laura, you get back into bed this instant. Happened. Diphtheria, darling. Rose is all right. She's with us. And the doctor says you're out of danger. And Manly? The doctor says his case is more difficult. Manly! Laura, you must come back to bed. Oh, Manly, look at me, darling. Look at me. Mom, don't let him die. I can't live without him. Well, I will do my best, but you must help me by coming back to bed.
Bessie! Bessie! Can't do it. The north wind came up all of a sudden and took my hands by surprise. You shouldn't be out here working in the first place. I can't think of anything else to do with myself besides we got notes to pay. Rose, you want to go for a ride on Tom? Yeah? All right. Oh, yes. Tom was just asking me if he could give you a ride to the shed. All right. Hold on. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, hold on tight. Right there. Yeah. All right, Tom. <laughs> yeah. What? What is it? Is it Tom? Yes. Yes, Manly, it is. There's a new life coming, Manly. What do we have to complain about? I think we'd better leave him alone a little while longer. need to write it down. How he felt when I first held him. What color his eyes were. All the things I was afraid I might forget. Things that I can't bear to remember. I have often thought that for a writer, memories are more powerful than life itself. Perhaps then. We should be careful about what we allow ourselves to remember. Cut some grass to save old coal. Right, uh, put the most important things first. 
Just work your way down the list till you run out of money. Now, darling, these are for cooking, not for pounding together. Why don't we read a book? This is the one you like. Remember this one with the little bird? And he's in the forest. And the little bird was flying through the forest. But he was getting so tired. His wings were working so hard that he couldn't keep up with his brother. Stay here. Doing up, Paul. Well, I get a little prowly sometimes. How's Almanzo? He's asleep. His feet are hurting him pretty bad. I don't think he can make it through another Dakota winter. He's thinking about Missouri. Yeah, I know. He talked it out with me some. We'd be going east, not west. We'd be back trailing. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about that. You're the sort to be a pioneer wherever you go. When I was a little girl, I thought no harm could come to us. As long as we were together in our little house. As you were there to play the fiddle for us before we went to bed. Why didn't you tell me it was going to be so far? I wish we could go back to that little house on the prairie. I do too, Flutter Budget. I sorely do. I want you to take that camp stove of mine. I can't see when we get back this way to return it to you. It's all right. I don't need a camp stove. I ain't going nowhere. Thank you. Wilder. Oh, just show Laura what you made for her. It was his idea. He borrowed your father's tools to make it. It's uh, a riot.
writing desk. That's beautiful, Manly. You remember when I, I said to you that there was something special about you? Yes. Well, I think maybe it has something to do with this. I don't seem to have much spirit to write poetry these days, Manly. Well, I don't mean poetry necessarily, just, just a setting down of things, you know? So that they won't be forgotten. Well, if you want my opinion, this house could use a little livening up. Gracie, bring the fiddle. Well, looks like this one's your call, half pint. What'll it be? Thank you, honey. Sweet by and by. All right, then. That one's our favorite. Give me Caroline. Have a happy life in Missouri, Laura. I love you with all of a mother's heart. I love you too, Mom. You once told me that I was mostly Pa's child. But I know that I'm yours too. I just hope that I have your strength in me. I want you to have my fiddle. Good luck to you then. It took us six weeks of steady travel to reach Missouri. I felt the hope returning to my soul, and I said, this is where we stop. We bought a farm there, high atop the Ozark Hills, with the $100 bill that I had hidden in that desk. We called the place Rocky Ridge, and the soil was stubborn, but Almanzo and I worked side by side, and, and Rose too, when she was old enough to help. We were happy, and we prospered, and in the still of the long summer evenings, we would sit there in the quiet, and in my mind, I could still hear the prairie winds. 
I remember what Manley said about the setting down of things. And I kept a diary of that trip to Missouri. When Rose grew up and became a writer herself, she persuaded me to write a story about my life. I was 60 when I wrote the first one, but I still write from the heart of a child. With a child's confidence that the world I knew can never truly disappear.